Hi, folks. Carl Boyer here, PNX News reporter. I'm here with Keith Morris, one of my favorite friends of punk rock existence altogether at his book, uh, what was it, book signing, uh, book signing situation here up in L.A. at Waco uh, uh, Novelty Store, and it's kind of great. Keith's here. There's the book. It's called My Damage. I got a question for you, Carl. I'm, 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 I'm with you, Keith. What's um, going on? Why do you lie to the population out there? Why do you not? Tell them your real name. <laughs> my Dunphy was my was one of my names. No, no. Uh, uh, should I? Jerry Dunphy. Who was the guy on Channel Eleven? The real Nazi. Oh, Hal Fishhead. Yeah. Oh no. no. Oh, George. George. Oh, Putnam. George, George Putnam. Putnam. Oh, yeah. God. George Putnam. George Patton. And, you know all those guys. A little bit of hi history right here. We're at Wacko Soap Plant, La Luz de Jesus. What? And that gal pulls up in her pink Corvette. Angeline? Angeline, who has all of these billboards. And here's a bit of trivia for you. Who used to pay for all of the billboards? Uh, the one dude that used to own the whiskey? Eddie Nash. Eddie Nash? <laughs> God bless him. He's a famous, more famous than no. us right now. He got the, the famous <laughs> KABC News. Oh, oh, George Putnam. Weatherman, George Fishback. George Fishback. Oh, George. Yeah, he Doctor. was partying with her. He was getting his. You know he what? was getting his style on. You he was what? sporting on the Baby Angeline. Hi, this is Angeline, and you're watching PNX News. Media blitz. A lot of those newscasters really had double lives. They led double lives. Even all the Hollywood people had just such secondary existences that all we didn't those see. punk rock people that we know, they all led secondary lives. Right, right. The book is really great, man. Your, your words today were so, are so enlightening and the adventures you've been through through punk rock up in L.A. I'm an Orange County guy and like it's, it's amazing to hear the great stories, you know, and have that be a pertinence in history because we made a historical move doing the punk rock thing and which we didn't have any idea what we were doing at the of time. Of course not, no. But, uh, dude, totally congratulations clueless. on everything you've done from Thank just you. every band you've been in where you were a, a warrior, a leader, just of just the new generation this of punks. The thing that we did today was really great because everybody that participated all played a role in all of that stuff that we were doing. Some of them are still doing it. Yeah, you know, the, the fruit don't fall far from the tree because, you know what, we started this with our, our own op opinions and our own creativity, and it ended up persevering into what it is today, and we didn't have to make any, you know, bend over backwards to please anybody, you know, and it, it, I'm really stoked that the kids now, like, are researching and figured out that we were the real, like, kind of beginning of what happened back in the late 70s. Well, we're just a bunch of idiots. And a bunch of idiots as well as we speak to you today. Well, we're concerned about what you're doing now. Hey, we have two mics going at once. That's pretty cool. He deserves it. Yeah, we do. Stereo. Um, but you have a book here. Stereo. Phonic sound. Stereo. Phonic it sound. It might even be in stereo. Uh, I like us, I like the, the book. I like pleasant story today about Super Tramp. Oh, that was good. That was really good. I like the way you went through the drain ditch at the at the Greek. It was at the Greek, right? Hollywood, like Bowl. The Hollywood Bowl. Hollywood Bowl. They climbed through the drain ditch getting under there and like it was pretty, pretty punk. We used to do the same thing in Orange County at the uh, uh, Verizon Amphitheater running through Lion Country Safari. We were really faster than the lions that we were running from because we had to run through where they were kept. Thanks. But right. that's a good one. Did you ever get beat? Maybe I, like, did I, you ever run for your life at the Hollywood Bowl? No, but I actually had a girlfriend that worked at Lion Country Safari, and she was in charge of some of the uh, orangutans. Oh. And one of the things that they would do is they would put candy in their mouth and kiss the orangutans, and she got some lip thing. Yeah, like yeah. A, 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 herp, a herp orangutan. Yeah. Yeah. Right. A herp. So uh, did... Uh, Wow, that's an interesting story. She, there's a pill for that too, Keith, I think. But uh, other than that, uh, just, man, being a kid, that's like... what Planned Parenthood is for. Is it great? Or, uh, tormenting our parents, you know, when we were kids? Of course. I know, it was one of the funnest things we could ever do. Kids are four. <laughs> exactly. Kids and parents. So life is good. Do you have a... Us and them. Right. Us versus them. It's kind of weird, yes. It's kind of great, and it did put us in a, a, a good situation in rock and roll history. But do you have a website going, Keith, or anything like that? Like a KeithMorris.com? No, 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 no. Forget about that. I don't have one either. No, well, I'm, especially I'm, with I'm his the name on it. I'm administrator on five different Facebook pages. Just please do not get me started on that. <laughs> I know, it's I know. It's a headache. Yeah, it's a crazy world just being overrun by things that we, you know, punk rock was about not wanting anybody to pay attention to us. Now everybody is. You know, it's about not making it. 
and now people think we have. I'm not really sure where to put that like wonder, but you know, it's just a great thing to just to be persevering like existence itself, my friend. Keith, you've done so much stuff from Black Flags, Circle Jerks, Bug Lamp. Everything is just like, everything is just so historical. It's so doc, you could document it. It's so chronological from just, you could just start up in the late seventies and everything's cool. Off is one of the best bands I've ever think that I've seen. It's just unreal. It was one of the best things ever. Will, will, will not get you anywhere with me. Oh, we still I'm suck. We still suck. What like to do uh, at this time because um, I actually have to go and do another one of these things. Excellent. I wasn't able to say no. It's Sunday night. Could you just please leave me alone? And let's do it. Let's do this during like regular hours. Jesus and stuff. Red. See, now I'm not going to get to go to church tonight. <sighs> Wow. Well, you could pray at home and stuff, you what know. What I would like to do is, uh, I would like to introduce the next, the, one of the guys. Icon. One of the guys that we certainly would not be doing what we're doing if he hadn't have been doing what he was doing before us. So we bow down to the greatness of Mr. Chris Desjardins, or more commonly known in punk rock circles in the musical world as Chris D., and he's also responsible for the Gun Club, my, uh, the Gun Club, Fire of Love, the Misfits Walk Among Us, Green on Red. That's just to name some of them. That, that's not even counting the Flesh Eaters and the Divine Horsemen. Unbelievable. So it's Chris's turn. Chris's turn. Thank you, Keith Morris. D, I bow down to you. Thank you, sir. Keith Morris, ladies and gentlemen. Dude. Ladies and gentlemen, Carl Boyer here. And Billboard. And we're with Chris D from the Flesh Eaters, one of the best bands in punk rock history. Stick a mirror between the bars. See what's happening to me. You in your phone dress, looking up into my face. There's a nasty little jab of all the on the floor. Chris, how are you, sir? I'm fine. Life is good. I'm good, good, thank you. Um, dude, Cry Baby, Cry Baby Killer, one of the very first songs that was in the first run of punk rock. The Flesh Eaters were there. It was a great, great band, a great time, a great, like, a great, a great thing, you know? Uh, did you have a lot of fun being in the early days of the Flesh Eaters? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I uh, uh, you know, was involved with Slash Magazine beforehand, and uh, I'd always wanted to put a band together. I had one in high school. And it didn't really work out because they didn't like their singing. And I, that, that was um, because it was, you know, what a lot of punk rockers like about three, four, five or six years later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it was kind of weird. It was very unique. Yeah. And uh, your, your album was just groundbreaking. I mean, it was just unbelievable. I was in the adolescence at that time, or maybe Social Distortion, but when that record came out, it was just unbelievable. It was just one of the best talent. It was really great. Not to, not to just, like, you know, kiss your booty, but it was one of the best ones because it was so unique. It was recorded so well and so, so much good interest in being different than the average music was, and that's what we were all about. I love the Flesh Eaters. I don't know if they're cannibals. I doubt it. That's the fine young cannibals. They're killing a duck outside right now, you know, for dinner. We're having filet duck uh, pate. So, yeah, Chris, life is really good. It's amazing to run into you here at the Keith Morris book signing uh, situation. And, uh, shoot, I saw you and I just, like, did a little flashback to reality, you know. And you're just, you know, everything's good, my friend, looking good. And uh, where do we get in touch with you? Do you have a website or anything like that? I don't have a website. I've got a... Uh you know, a Flesh Eaters Facebook page. Nice. And, uh, a books 
by Chris D. Page on, on Facebook. But, Sweet, nice. Um, Let's talk about the books for a minute. Now, you, you've got a couple of books right here. Um, you've been writing, actually, uh, uh, quite a bit lately. Well, yeah, I, I had a really uh, prolific period between 2009 and 2013 and uh, came out with this anthology, Minute to Pray, A Second to Die. There it is, folks. Which has uh, got all the Flesh Eaters and Divine Horsemen lyrics ever written. It's got a bunch of short stories, some excerpts from novels, which have since come out. Um, uh, it's got a bunch of dream journal stuff, stories. Um, All kinds of stuff. That's yeah. a great looking book, dude. That is classic. And that one, Dragon Wheel Slender, or Dragon Splendor. Dragon Wheel Splendor. Hold that one up, Chris. Uh, other, other love stories of violence and dread. <laughs> love stories of violence and dread, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it here from Christy of the Flesh Eaters. Uh, thank you. But yeah, he's a good man. This is a cool dude. And then there's four other books, uh, novels that have come out. Nice. Between 2009 and 2013. And when did the Flesh Eaters uh, first get together? What? Uh, what? 70, uh, 77, but we didn't record anything until January 78. Right, right. You're, we're probably the same age because that's when my career kind of started, 76, 77, when everything was just kind of busting through with the Sex Pistols, Ramones. It was getting more, more of that. Music was being distributed for us to hear. I remember getting the very first Sex Pistols single, God Save the Queen, and uh, it was just, it was a great time, you know. It's, uh, mm -hmm. And we're still around to talk about it, and it's a great thing because because your album is classic historical document now, and it's just back in the day we're just having fun being different and having fun, and now all of a sudden it's become a pertinent situation to the kids nowadays. What we were doing and thinking, and how we were thinking, and how we were putting this stuff together. It's really cool. I'm really I'm really. Uh, blessed and stoked to have met you today and see you here because I haven't seen you in years dude I don't think I've talked to you in 20 years 30 maybe but now, you know, can, we, can we get your books in uh, regular bookstores like Barnes and Noble or Amazon uh, or where, where can we get these books you know the the, the, the books uh, this particular one is only available on Amazon the miniature print book um, the other books are available on Amazon I think they're available in Barnes and Noble great stuff um, the uh, the brick and mortar uh, mom and pop bookstores across the country just depends. Uh, they can I've got distribution through Amazon through some of those. Um, there's books in Los Angeles that uh, bookstores that I handle myself. Nice with distribution. Um, so there's a lot of different ways you can find out on my. My uh, Facebook page, the books by Chris D. Page. Uh, there's frequently links up where you can get the books. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great, dude. Because everything we did is like makes sense to people now in a weird way. Because when we were doing it, you know, we had no expectations of just being millionaires. We were just having fun with music and a new for the love of doing it, and the opportunity to have the love of doing it. Because a few of the bands' music was stagnating a bit, a little more energy, a little more guitar, a little more just kind of diverse vocals, and it just became an entity for rock and roll history. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris D from the Flesh Eaters. Thanks, Chris, for having us or having. I mean, it's great to have you. It's great to have us all here. Thank you, guys. Call Boy or PNX News with. Billboard, and we'll be, we're signing off right now from the Keith, Mor Keith Morris book signing party up here in Hollywood, California. Adios, punk rock, or die. It was a weekend afternoon, and as usual, I'd spent my morning consuming some chilled adult beverages. I was ready to go wander down to the beach and sleep it off under the pier when Iggy and the Stooges' search and destroy came blasting out of the radio. I started to pogo around, jumping up on Greg's desk and springing into the air, screaming the lyrics to the song. I totally lost it and did what felt like a triple flip in the air and bounced onto the sofa. I wasn't done yet. I jumped off the arm of the sofa and did a swan dive across the floor, which I timed perfectly to the end of the song, crash landing on my face. I didn't care what happened to me. All I cared about was the song and putting on a show for my friends. After the music stopped and I picked myself off the floor, Greg looked at me in disbelief and said, you're not playing drums in the band. What? 
I thought he was going to kick me out of the shop for being a total spaz. I thought he was booting me out of the band. You're the vocalist, Greg said. And with that, out of a friendship between a tall guitar player and a short vocalist, the seeds of Black Flag were sown. Yeah, that's